Hi, I'd like to show off a project I've been working on. It's called Big Time Stream Tools, and it's designed to help you build custom functionality to enhance your live streams. I stream as a hobby on a Twitch channel called Golden VCR, where we watch old VHS tapes. And when I started out, I built a whole website and backend to support all the custom data and commands and graphics I wanted to use in my streams, building my own services in Go, integrating with the Twitch API, and deploying everything to the cloud. Since I wrote it all myself, I could very easily add fun stuff on a whim. At one point, we watched a tape that was confidently incorrect about the capital of British Columbia. Of concerts in the city of Vancouver, capital of British Columbia. So I whipped up a chat command that will print the name of a random municipality in BC. In addition to capitalizing on memes, I wanted to drive viewer engagement and add levity to boring moments. So I built a feature where users could cheer 200 bits and summon a friend to appear on screen, generated based on a description in their message. Being able to do silly creative stuff like this was really fun, but it took a lot of work and technical skills to build all the underlying software that would let me do this kind of stuff. I happen to find both of these things fun, but I'd wager there are a lot of creative people who can make a lot of cool things with a set of tools like this, but who don't necessarily want to write a bunch of software first. So it seemed like a shame to me that the barrier to entry was so high. Sure, as a streamer, you can add basic alerts and chat commands to your channel pretty easily through Twitch and existing third-party services. But if you want to do anything truly novel, well, then you have to figure out how to complete an OAuth flow, securely store and refresh an access token, write an HTTP server application, register webhook callbacks, and deploy your code to the internet. Your typical streamer ain't got time for that, even if they're technically minded. If you want to make a video game, you don't have to learn to be an engine programmer first. You can jump into Unreal or Unity or Godot and start writing high-level scripts, because in the world of game development, making fun interactive stuff happen is understood to be a different concern requiring a different skill set than lower-level engineering. And so game engines provide accessible tools in the form of scripting systems. So why can't there be an accessible scripting system for making fun interactive stuff happen on your live streams? That's what Big Time aims to be. I looked at the bespoke platform I'd built for Golden VCR and started daydreaming about what it would look like if all the high-level logic that's specific to my streams was run in a script interpreter instead of being hard-coded. And I started to take some of the features I'd built and re-architect them to form a more flexible, user-friendly product. So let me show you how it works right now. If any of this piques your interest, you can check out the website at bigtime.stream. And if you're mostly just bummed out that this isn't an Unreal tutorial, I, I get it. Please just smash that like button anyway so the algorithm doesn't eat me. So this demo shows off what I've built so far. I'll just register an account, and once I've confirmed my email, I can log in. What I see at first is very basic. I can manage my profile information, and of course I can log out and log back in, but I won't be able to do much until I have a license. I don't have a pricing model at the moment, so right now that just involves me logging in with super admin access and granting a license to my new account. Now I'm able to create an organization, which gives me access to the full platform. Everything I create in the app will be stored in my organization, and I can invite other people to my organization to help me. For example, we can send invite emails to Alice and Bob, and they'll be shown here. If Alice were real, she'd get an email that looked like this and clicking the link would create an account, log her in, and add her to our organization. From here, we could manage her access or remove her. So let's look at some of the features of the app. On the left sidebar here, we have a bunch of pages that let us create and manage custom resources. At the bottom, we have another set of pages where we can connect all those resources together with scripts. We'll start by connecting a Twitch account. BigTime lets you configure a granular set of permissions to determine what kind of access you're authorizing us to have on your Twitch account. I'll just use the default settings for a broadcaster account. This OAuth process redirects us to Twitch, where we can securely authenticate and review the permissions we're granting. If we grant authorization, our Twitch account is now connected to our organization in BigTime. So on the Event Types page, we now have a list of Twitch events that we can respond to with custom script logic. Let's do something whenever a viewer follows our Twitch channel. Clicking this button defines a new event handler function in a new script file. Every event handler is a function that takes two arguments. 
The O variable represents our organization, and it lets us access the resources we've created. The E variable represents the event, so in this case it tells us more about the follower we've just received. BigTime gives us detailed type information for everything we do in our scripts, so there's no guesswork about what we can and can't access. We can just start typing. E dot shows us that our event gives us data about the account that was followed and the viewer who followed it. We can see at a glance that for each of those we have access to the Twitch display name, login, and user ID. If we check our organization object, we can see our connected Twitch accounts under o.twitchaccounts. Since we connected the Golden VCR Twitch account just a second ago, we now have access to it in scripts, just like that. And one thing we can do with that account is to set a new stream title. We'll pass in a variable called message, and then we'll build a string based on the follow event. Blank is the newest follower, and we'll fill in the blank with the name of the viewer who followed. We'll also print a message as output, so it'll be shown to us when this event runs. Now, if we save this file, it'll quickly be compiled. Once it's finished, our new script is live. We're using TypeScript here, so syntax errors are pretty hard to make. If we make a typo, the editor will tell us about it very visibly. And when we save our scripts, they'll fail to compile if there are any errors. This means that if we save our scripts and they compile OK, we can be confident that they don't contain any obvious errors. So let's see our new script in action. I'll pull up the event log alongside the dashboard for my Twitch channel. When we get a new follow, we can see that BigTime records an event, and we can see that our custom script function has successfully run. Here we can see the full details of our event, including the output from the print function. This example script is very simple, but the power of our scripting system really lies in how it lets us connect different moving parts together. As another example, let's add a Discord webhook. I've configured a webhook that can post messages to a channel in my Discord server. So I'll just copy the URL and enter it into BigTime. Now let's use this webhook whenever our stream goes live. Right away you can see that our organization object has been updated to give us access to our new Discord webhook. And we can use it to send a message. We can do a bunch of fancy formatting if we want to, but let's just send a basic string. We'll get the name of the channel that's just gone live, and we'll format a simple notification message that includes a link to that channel. We can save this file, and now if our stream goes live, BigTime will automatically send a message to our Discord server like this. Let's talk about some more things we can do on our Twitch streams. I'm going to connect a second account, this time just as a chatbot. We can use this account just for sending automated messages in chat. So for example, if we want to print a customized message in chat, Every time somebody cheers, we could do that like this. But we don't want to be limited to just responding to events from Twitch. We can use commands to define custom scripts that we can run on demand. And one way to run commands is by sending special chat messages. We can configure this command so that anybody in our chat can run it just by entering exclamation point hello. We'll make this command just send a simple chat message. Commands can have parameters too. For example, this echo command will require a string value. And in our handler function, we can access that argument value from the event object. And of course, everything we're writing is TypeScript, so we can factor out common functionality and define our own custom logic across multiple files. OK, we've saved and compiled our latest scripts, so our new commands are live. If we pull up Twitch chat, we can test them out. BigTime recognizes commands in our chat messages, and it responds to us using the bot account that we configured, and our events show up immediately in the event log. We can count on this log to tell us about every script event that happens in our organization. And if one of our scripts runs into an error, it'll let us know, and we can see a call stack that shows us exactly where the error happened. Now let's look at another feature that can be used in conjunction with commands and Twitch events, collections. I have a collection of VHS tapes that I use on my streams, so I'll create a tape collection. One thing BigTime lets us do is define custom properties for our resources. To demonstrate, we'll add two properties to our tape collection, and we'll set some initial values. In the script editor, you can see that we now have a tape collection that we can access from our organization object, and we can read or write our custom property values from our tape collection. If we change this value, either from a script or directly in the app, 
then we can alter the behavior of this command. As we saw before, our script system's type checking is really handy here. If we decide we no longer need these properties, we can delete them, and our script will immediately show errors to let us know that this event handler will no longer work as intended. Once we get a successful compile again, we know we're in the clear. In addition to defining custom properties on the whole collection, we can add custom data for each item in the collection. For each tape, I keep track of the publication year, the runtime in minutes, a category and genre value, and the Twitch user ID of the viewer who sent the tape in. Now, I already have all this data recorded in a spreadsheet. It's hosted on Google Sheets, and it's publicly viewable. So we can just enter its URL here, and BigTime will look at the spreadsheet and automatically find the relevant column heading for each of our custom properties. We can then populate our collection from the spreadsheet and keep it in sync with future changes. This makes it super easy to write commands that reference your custom data. For example, here's a tape command that lets a viewer request information about any tape in the collection. We can also do some pretty sophisticated querying on collection items. As a simple example, this is a command that checks for tapes whose names contain a specific search string. The last feature we'll look at is broadcast data. BigTime lets you keep records of your streams in the form of broadcasts. Here I'll make a VHS broadcast type. You can also define segments that occur within a broadcast. You might have many different types of segments with different data and behaviors for each, but here we'll just define a screening segment. We can associate this type of segment with the tapes collection, so that for every segment we keep track of which VHS tape was screened in that segment. We could also define our own custom properties if we wanted to. So now we can very easily record historical data for our streams. When the channel goes live, we'll start a new VHS broadcast. When the channel goes offline, we'll check to see if we're in the middle of a VHS broadcast, and if so, we'll end it. Now we can make a command that only we can use as the broadcaster to let us quickly start new screening segments. We'll check to see if there's a VHS broadcast in progress. Then we'll look up the requested tape, and if that all checks out, we can start a new segment for that tape. So now we're recording historical data about what tapes get watched and when, and we can customize what happens during the stream based on the current state of the broadcast. As another simple example, here's a command that any viewer can run to get information about the tape that's currently being screened. So assuming we have a stream going, we can test our commands. You'll notice that we can't use the set tape command as a viewer because of the permissions we configured. But once the broadcaster runs that command, we now have an active screening and... Mm. Big time is a really great way to learn more about JavaScript. In its modern versions and with the added benefits of TypeScript, it's a really powerful and usable language, but it's still perfectly legal to implicitly coerce a function to a string. What a great way to show you how easy it is to make changes. All we have to do is edit our script and save it, and just like that, we're back in business. So that's a look at how BigTime works so far. Some key features are still noticeably absent, but I've had a lot of fun building this app. Getting it this far as a solo project has been a great way to improve my skills in back-end and front-end web development, and designing this scripting system has presented a lot of interesting technical challenges that I'd love to explain in more detail someday. I would love to be able to continue developing big time and release it as a product. So if it's something you might be interested in using, head over to bigtime.stream. There's a survey you can fill out to get on the waitlist and give me valuable input. And as always, please feel free to share your thoughts and feedback in the comments of this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.